All right, so before I get started on this fire, you know, I'm, I'm basically on a bed of, of white pine needles. Uh, so what I did was take the time to scratch out a good, you know, three to four feet in diameter uh, area, scratch it right down to the dirt as best as possible to kind of add a little more safety because the worst, last thing you want to do is, is set your environment that you're trying to survive in on fire. So having said that, I'm going to build a fire here right in the center. It doesn't have to be that big because it's relatively warm. I just need it to boil that water that I just got. So making a fire lay just to, to actually boil water is, uh, is fairly simple. I've got my tinder. I'll set that up here. Got my tinder going with some, some poplar bark, which I'll process down a little bit further. I've got three different sizes of uh, kindling going here. This is actually uh, a ball of sap that's mixed in with some needles, uh, just to make it take off that much better. A little bit of fuel. Uh, so when I'm looking at getting kindling, enough to boil water at least, I'm looking at trying to get you know to where I can get my fist, my, basically my, my pinky and my thumbs touching, you know, two hands around that bundle before I go up in sizes. So I've got what I call matchstick size, then I move up to pencil size, and then from there I'll go to what I would consider, you know, marker size. So those three sizes, I start with the super fine or with the, with the finer material with the tinder. I go to matchsticks. Once these are burning, I'll go to pencils. Once those are burning, I'll go to markers, then from there I can go up to wrist size sustaining fuel uh, and keep this going for as long as I need. Um, so uh, once I get this burning, you know, thumb size sticks burning, I can pretty much walk away from this, gather other material and come back to it and it's not going to go out. Um, so that's what I mean by making a sustainable fire. This is probably enough to boil that water, um, but I'll probably get a little bit more on there just to make sure. Uh, I'm looking for a full rolling boil. When you're talking about thermal purification, thermal disinfection, what I'm trying to do is the majority of the waterborne pathogens that are in this uh, stuff that we brought back in that pond, the majority of the waterborne pathogens uh, will die at about 185 degrees. Uh, and there's a lot of different, different uh, reference materials that'll tell you different things, but 185 degrees is where pretty much everything but smallpox is going to go down. Uh, and I'm not worried about smallpox in the water. Uh, so there's no real reason to bring it up, you know, to, to boiling other than I can't visually see here in the field what 185 degrees looks like because, you know, 175 degree water looks like 185 degree water. The only visual indicator I have for when this water has been brought to at least 185 is 212 degrees, which is the boiling point. Um, water can only go to the boiling point before it becomes a vapor uh, and it evaporates. So in a situation like this, when I've got to walk, you know, a few hundred meters to get to my water source, um, I'm going to preserve this as much as possible. I'm going to bring it just to a boil. Um, there are some references that will tell you that you need to boil for three minutes or you need to boil for 10 minutes, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that means that I'm well above the temperature I needed for longer than I needed. And that the additional time, that three minutes of boiling or that 10 minutes of boiling, all that's doing is evaporating much needed water out of this bottle. So when I only need 185, once I hit a boil and hit 212, I know that I've hit 185 and spent some time there. So. The only reason I bring it to a rolling boil is because that's my only visual indicator that I've reached at least 185 and more. So enough about that. I'll get a fire going. Um, I'll get a fire lay started here. And let's say that in this instance, since I was down in the water, this is something that could happen to you. And a lot of folks rely on lighters for their survival. Um, and you should for emergencies, absolutely. This is, this is, this is sure flame right here once I get this little lock off of it. But this is a sure flame deal. But there are some drawbacks. You know, it's pretty susceptible to wind. There we go. That's a sure flame. Uh, so in an emergency, that's what I'm actually absolutely going to. Uh, I tend to carry one in my pocket. Uh, I tend to have one in my pack as well. But let's say that all I had was this one and I fell into that water source, into that pond, and I got soaked. And my 
lighter got wet, which is another thing it's susceptible to. It's susceptible to wind, it's susceptible to water, and uh, extremely cold temperatures, which I take care of by having it in my pocket next to my body heat. But let's say that it got completely wet. Lighter works. Let's say I fell into the pond um, and was in there for a while. You can see that's, that's just full of water, just to simulate me falling into the pond. When I take this out, it's no longer gonna work. So there's a way that we can rescue this to still make it usable. So if you're a person that relies on a lighter for your survival, you need to know everything about that lighter, especially how to rescue this lighter once it gets wet. So I'm gonna leave that in there to soak for a little bit while I set up the rest of this. Then I'll show you how to rescue that lighter and still use it to affect fire here. Set that to the side so I don't knock it down. All right, so I'm just gonna establish a quick fire lay. Fire loves chaos, fire loves structure to climb, and it needs to have air. If you think about the fire triangle, that's, that's heat, fuel, and air. This is the fuel, the air is being provided by the environment, and I'm about to apply heat to this. So with my tinder bundle, these pine needles are my course. This is kind of a wet weather tinder where I've got the pine sap placed in here. And then I've got some tulip poplar bark in this case and some of that cedar bark if I needed it. So what I'm gonna do is process this down as fine as possible. My goal when I'm using a lighter is no more than five seconds. Anything more than that and you're kind of wasting fuel. That means that you didn't process your tinder far enough down. So taking a little time here to process this natural fuel conserves the you know, artificial fuel that I have in my lighter and I can use it more and more. So, I'm gonna process this down real quick. Spend a few minutes getting it real fine. So that it's ready to take a flame really quickly. If I was using something like a ferro rod, a ferrocerium rod, I'd process it down even further to take the sparks. But since I'm using an open flame, it doesn't have to be as fine as it would be with some of the other methods. Then I'll take my ball that has the, uh, the actual pine sap in it, and I'll place that towards the middle, leaving myself an opening here. Now, the lighter. Rescuing a wet lighter. It's wet, it no longer works. One of the modifications that I do to this is there's a little comfort guard, like a child guard, that runs right down the center of that rotary striker. So I pop that off of all my lighters, and that allows me to dry it out quicker. So first thing I'm gonna do is after, it, after it's wet, is I'm gonna shake it several times as hard as I can. Then I'm gonna blow directly in here as hard as I can a few times. What I'm trying to do is shoot that water away from all the working parts in here. It's a miniature ferro serum rod in here with a rotary steel striker. Then I'm going to roll it on my clothes until I get sparks. Those sparks are going to dry it out the rest of the way. And it lights right up. So that is how you rescue a wet lighter. And I can use that now to get this tinder going. Introduce some air into here. Pull this over. Now, the other rule is that I don't want to add fuel until the flames have reached above the last level of fuel that I put on, which is doing now. So I've now transferred that heat from that smaller tinder onto this matchstick size kindling. It's above. Then I can start adding this. Before I do that, I'm going to take this water though, and I'm going to set it inside. 
because I want to start boiling this as, qu as quickly as possible. Build this up around there. Kind of stabilize that out. Then I can move on, since this is above my last level of fuel, I can move on to start placing marker sized in there. Now this is going well enough that I can walk away and get more fuel and just keep adding that to that. I'm gonna keep on going until I see a rolling boil. And then I'm gonna get that out of the fire and let it start cooling. Okay, so I've got a, a rolling boil in here, and everything after that is is pretty much just evaporating my precious water source here. So what I'm going to do is is get this out of the way, so that I can reach in here and get that water off. So also in my water kit is what's called a fish jaw spreader. And it basically folds and carries like that, but then it pops out like this. So I can actually hang water bottles with this if I wanted. But I like to use it because I can reach into that bottle, pull it out, set it off to the 